Thanks for tuning in to Duck Bricks. I'm Chris, and this is the LEGO Creator 3-in-1 Medieval Castle. It came out in 2021 and retailed for 100 US dollars. The whole point of the set was that you could rebuild it into three different models, with this being the main model and two other slightly smaller models alongside it. But what happens if you take three copies of this set and combine them all together? Well, a user on Rebrickable has done just that. I have linked the instructions in the description below, and they have made a massive castle out of three copies of the set. So for $300, I went out, I bought three copies of this, and I cannot wait to take a look at it in all its glory. Let's go on to the review. All right, so this magnificent castle is a result of combining three copies of the LEGO Creator Medieval Castle that came out just last year in 2021. All in all, the pieces to build this cost $300 because again, each castle cost $100. However, I did end up with a lot of spares. I ended up with quite a lot of spares. Honestly, probably hundreds of pieces left aside. So if you just wanted to recreate this model from your own pieces or just buy the pieces yourself, you probably wouldn't have needed to spend that much money. I just found it was a lot easier to literally just buy three copies as needed and then purchase it and build it from there. So this is one of the most impressive large-scale LEGO castles I personally have ever put together. It is just so cool how it all comes together. And despite starting from a fairly or arguably juniorized style of castle building, this is absolutely very, very detailed. It's anything but juniorized. It has so much detail on the windows and the walls and even the courtyards and everything. It honestly feels like a very formidable tower and less of just a standard castle. We haven't really ever gotten a building like this in Lego form before as an official set, which is why it was so fun to build this. I was blown away when I first saw images of this online and knew I absolutely had to put it together and buy all the sets necessary to build this model for my own collection. So the structure of this review we're going to be trying to tackle from the outside first and then kind of move our way to the inside for this particular castle building. Again, incredibly impressed by the amount of exterior design detail that went into this. And I was also able to throw in some of the minifigures from the castle sets into the building as well. So first of all, as you can see here, you have two separate components of the castle. And obviously we're gonna be taking a closer look at that when we open up the inside. There's nothing actually connecting these, which I honestly think was the right decision. Any use of Technic pins would have probably made it a little bit easy to fall apart or make it either too hard to separate. So they literally just have two separate pieces that you hold together and of course revealing a very elaborate interior once you open them up. First off, kind of tracking the journey of a minifig here, you have a very, very tall staircase leading upwards. Of course, since this was built using just the pieces in the Crater Castle, this was personally not the best use of pieces. You literally stack six by six plates to make this, which absolutely consumes a lot of weight, a lot of parts volume, makes it a lot harder to take apart. But of course, since you had the pieces available, why not? You know, this is a combo model after all. Once you get up the stairs, there is a very formidable gate which does swing open from the inside. So you can actually open this up once we get to the inside of the model as well. So you've got the gate element right here. And then you have the Black Falcons logo emblazoned on the top here with the swords crossed. A very cool look and feel. Now, as we rotate around, you'll notice that you have a tower up at the top here for some of the archers. One thing I really do want to point out is that I'm really impressed by the amount of detail managed to include here. You can see that you've got these slit type of windows angled with studs on the side building techniques. This sort of thing continues all the way down to this part as well and down to the base. So very cool how they have that here. Zooming all the way out again, you'll notice that all of this kind of texturing continues all the way off to the side here. I really appreciate the way the drawbridge is built with some of the metallic silver elements forming some detail underneath the bridge itself. You have some vines creeping and some foliage with some mushrooms located around the side of the castle. And then you get to some of the more livable space and the windows. So going on over here, let's see if we can get this lined up again. Sorry, I've got this sort of misaligned in terms of how the castle is set up. That's one downside to having there be no connections to it because it just splits apart very easily. But you can see here, 
You have different sizes of windows using a very nice type of architectural style with the yellow kind of paneling in terms of the wood interfaced with each other sticking out. So you can imagine that these are more luxurious parts of the inside of the castle. You've got vines crawling up the side of the wall, which is honestly a bit of an illegal technique. You're stressing the vine pieces quite a lot by having them wrap around here, but it's not a big deal. And honestly, they are made to be flexible. So honestly, it's not again a big deal whatsoever. You do have the vines wrapping here and you also can see that there is a little tower that is mounted on the side here where minifigures can actually be mounted inside that tower and serve as lookouts. Of course, there's a bit of a section here that's fully walkable that figures can walk out of the castle side hall and then out into this tower area here and just look out on the side of the castle. So very cool to see that. And then here, as we rotate all the way around, we've got our main hall. So over here is an area for minifigures to walk out of this particular door, which does swing open. That door does open up. It's just a studs on the side construction. And then you have a full on ridged area for minifigures to stand guard, of course, emblazoned with the Black Falcons logo as well with the blue outlines just as they are supposed to have in Classic Castle. Now this is so large, it barely fits in my studio here. It's just a very vertical build, which is honestly really impressive because, because despite it being built out of the pieces of a castle that was probably only around this tall at its tallest point, maybe up to here, this absolutely doubles the height while making it feel like a very substantial building. It still feels like a Lego set in the way it comes together and the way the pieces are used, but it truly feels like an expert level display model and is honestly one of the biggest castles I have in my collection. Moving around here, I really appreciate the usage of the stained glass windows here. You actually have just the clear pieces pretending to be used like glass on the side of the castle wall here, which is absolutely a great detail to have. Only one minor con as well is that in the way that this is mounted, it's very easy to have this particular piece just fall inside. As you can see, I literally just dropped it inside the interior of the castle. This is just really mounted very awkwardly. It's just this particular piece. You take it and you kind of just let it sit there. So nothing is holding this on. I can think of a couple of ways on how this could have been resolved, but it's a little awkward how that's held on. Other than that, though, everything is absolutely fantastic about the castle. And, and yeah. yes, of course, you can remove some sections to get access inside the castle itself. Now, one thing I want to do is kind of rotate this upwards and take a look at the castle from a top down view. Moving our camera up here, you can really see the verticality of the model itself. There's a lot going on here from the areas up at the top courtyard, and you've got a lot of space to look down on it. And of course, this entire thing splits open, as you can see here, to reveal a very detailed interior. So let's now take a look at the interior now. So this whole thing moves open like so. I'm gonna start with this section right here and then work our way to the other section because there is a lot of great detail to see here. So moving on to the interior of the castle, you have a very nicely detailed room with a fireplace. This almost feels like a nice throne room area for the king to sit. As you can see, you've got a very lavish throne here, or maybe even a great hall where people can come up to the king and profess statements and negotiate, all while eating delicious food. Up at the top here, you have a chandelier as well. So you've got a fully functioning chandelier swinging from the top of the ceiling, featuring fire mounted on each of the candles, which is really great, especially because they're just using parts in unique ways. And of course, as we rotate outwards to here, this particular door does open up like so. And that gives you access to the outside courtyard right here. So that is a great way to access the outside. And even still, moving onwards to the lower section, we have a bit of a section for the knights to sleep. You can see you've got some bunk beds for the knights themselves, as well as just a bucket and spare helmets. This is just a really nice feature because it really makes the castle truly feel lived in. I definitely feel like this is a realistic area for the knights to sleep in. And rotating this around, you may be wondering, well, what exactly is going on in this section right here? Well, as you can see, it's a little bit difficult to remove the walls, but... You can knock them down like so. Very simple to remove the paneling of the walls here. And that reveals a whole interior market and treasure area for the knights to access. As you can see, there is a door that actually is tucked away. It's very hard to notice, but from the knights area, you can open the door right here to get through it. So it does have full access on the interior. Once the door is opened, as you can see right there, let's shut it again. 
You have a lot of different treasure here, so you can take a look at all the different food that's hidden, some gold bars. Of course, you have a bit of food storage and market type area here. And this is just a really fun hidden away area that is really easy to miss, especially once you have all the panels back in. So you can see each of these panels is pretty much identical or very, very similar, just built with differing styles of stone and rock work to spice things up here and there. But of course, once those are closed up, you really can't even see anything going on in this area, which is a really cool feature to have. Of course, setting this part of the castle aside, it's now time to take a look at the much larger tower that we have right here. I'm going to start off kind of in the center section and work our way in similarly to how we did it previously. Now, this whole panel just slides open and knocks outwards, so it's just a very nice panel that they have here. But essentially, you also can see that they have full staircases going straight from the bottom all the way to the top. So the way you enter is that the gates swing open just inside here, so the gates are now open on the front. You can come right on in, so let's close them up right now to make sure that no intruders can enter through the front of the castle, like so. And then you can see that the staircase actually does wrap around the full interior, which is a really nice detail. I like the inclusion of little candles on the bottom here to kind of simulate a holding area. You can see some bottles of wine or alcohol or maybe even just water that they're storing here, kind of a distillery type area there. Some more treasure on the underside. And again, very hard to see, but there is a staircase that leads down to this section, very hard to get access to, but the staircase does fully work to accommodate minifigs. Working our way up, we have just some more nooks and crannies here inside the castle itself. Armor mounted on a frame here. You go up the stairs, you can go up to this area, and then go up these stairs up to here, where you can see even more sections up at the very top. So here you can see a bit of a training dummy, which is always fun to see, as well as this sort of section to house more medieval knight's armor, plus just some other random stuff that you can see around here, like the goblet being housed like so with a candelabra. Really ornate detail for the interior of the section, especially just using these standard Lego creator pieces. And even moving on upwards, there are some details hidden within the tower itself. I am just going to go ahead and show this from full angles here, but let's just close this section up like so, so you can see that's fully closed up. Now moving upwards, you can even see a bit of an interior inside that tower section right there. Just all sorts of really great detail that can be easily accessed like so. One thing I will have to mention is that unfortunately, because this is not an official LEGO set, there are some areas that are a little flimsy. As you notice, this does tend to wobble quite a bit. Wobbles very dangerously. I was very worried I was going to break this off. So this is not the best building technique here. It does also strain the pieces just a little bit in the way that this is attached. You can't quite get it to snap off. Onwards. And all in all, there's just some strange things going on in terms of some of the ways the towers are built are a little bit flimsy, but overall, the builder was working with only the pieces included in these sets themselves. And that honestly is a feat just by itself. You literally just had these specific pieces being used in multiple copies of the Castle 3 in 1 set, and were able to come up with this just absolutely fantastic work. And this honestly blew me away when I first saw it. Closing the castle back up, you can really respect just how everything comes together. I really appreciate just the heavy amount of detail, which you can see from the foliage creeping its way upwards to the top of the castle, to the crumbled rockwork going all the way up to the front gate itself, going upwards to the classic Black Falcon's emblem emblazed on the archway there. You have different towers sticking out the hallways. Great hall over here, a viewing area right there. Moving on upwards, the large roof, an even larger observation platform for the night, and then this very large and prominent top tower, which all comes together in this fantastic Lego model of the castle. So now let's talk a little bit about value. So again, I paid $300 for this, and honestly, it kind of feels worth it to me. Even though I had so many pieces left over, creator sets are usually typically great examples of fantastic value and sometimes offer the best value that can be found out of any Lego set. So it was no exception building this and putting it together. I really truly felt like I was getting a lot of value out of constructing this particular model. You've got some great rock work here, really does feel like a completely different model than the original. And honestly, if you were just being able to buy the pieces separately, I probably would expect you to pay something around that price, maybe 200 to 250, but still, this is absolutely worth it. Not only does it have a full interior, but it has an amazingly detailed exterior and looks fantastic 
classic on any shelf. This is a must buy for any builder interested in Lego Castle and again blew me away in the way it was constructed. But with that, we have summed up our look at this amazing Lego castle. Let me know down in the comments below, what do you think of this build? Do you like it? Do you dislike it? Do you think it's worth the money? And are any of you inspired to go out there and now spend $300 on three copies of the Medieval Castle Creator set to build this on your own? Because I certainly think it's worth it. I've linked the rebrickable link in the description below. You do have to purchase the instructions for a small fee, but it is absolutely worth it. I really think it definitely is worth it to support the creator and the mockist who simply just took multiple copies of the castle and made this. And while I have seen people do their own things with different versions and copies of the castle pieces, this is easily the best I've ever seen and probably the best it's going to get. I love how the builder was able to make such a strikingly different color scheme, especially with the dark blue roof, which goes very well with the Black Falcons, especially because if you look at the original set, it didn't even have a dark blue roof at all. So that was a surprise in and of itself. All in all, this is easily one of my favorite Lego castle builds that I've built myself, and I absolutely would recommend it to anyone looking to build something like this of their own. All right, so with that, we have summed up our look at the very special custom 3x medieval castle massive fortress now this is a truly gigantic castle build and to be honest while this is a great castle it definitely is very small it certainly feels very compact for 100 dollars but that massive tower certainly feels like you're getting a lot more bang for your buck and there's a lot of really great stuff as you just saw in the review so let me know down in the comments below what do you think of this do you like it do you dislike it and do you think that maybe more could have been done with the many many parts left over with that, I've summed up this review. Again, you can check out the link in the description below to see the instructions for this particular model. Thank you all so much for tuning in to Duck Bricks, and stay tuned for even more LEGO news, reviews, discussion, and analyses coming your way very soon. Bye-bye for now.